This is my 2019 Hawk 250 that I bought on Amazon. What's up guys, I'm Sean from SRK Cycles, and yes, as being a motor, as owning a motorcycle dealership myself, this bike horrifies me. The fact that you can buy a motorcycle on Amazon should be pretty scary to me. So I didn't buy this bike to resell, I bought this bike as research, and I bought it for $1,400. And just like any other thing you buy on Amazon, it just got shipped to me a couple days later. Now instead of a UPS truck or a FedEx truck or the, uh, the mail truck, it came in on a big, 53 foot truck and the guy wheeled it in with a, with a forklift. It took about four and a half hours to put it together and you can actually put it together with just the tools that it comes with in the little tool set. Now if you have your own tools and power drills it might take a little bit, you might be able to get it done a little bit quicker. And if you have a friend who can help you out just to get it on some type of lift or some way to put the, uh, to put the front tire on, uh, that might make it easier. But honestly you could just lay it on its side, you know, on a pad and you could just put it together like that. And not only did I buy the bike for $1,400, but for less than $200, I bought a three-year unlimited everything warranty through Amazon. So I'm interested to see how that actually works out. But uh, at first glance, to be honest with you, it looked like a normal dirt bike. Now there are a few things that kind of make it look a little bit cheaper, and we're going to compare them with, a, uh, with my dirt bike. So comparing this to an almost 20 year old Honda, this is, a C this is my CRF uh, 250X, a couple things you notice real quick. One, the forks on the Honda are significantly larger. I mean, these just really, really small. These are giant. They're gonna be able to withstand a little bit more, uh, more torture. The frame, the frame on this is some type of aluminum, aluminum cast. This is gonna be a steel frame. Although this bike still really isn't that heavy. This one, just to keep it simple and ship easier. This one's air cooled while mine is water cooled. When you ride this bike, it, it does, it generally just feels a little bit tighter. But if you've never been used to this and this is your first bike, this thing's actually not that bad. And then the other big difference is this is, although they're both similar displacement, this is like a 240 and this is a 250, this is a 30 horsepower and this is rated at 14 horsepower. We actually took this thing off road. Here's the results. No, I'll tell you what, it'd be real easy for someone to be like, oh man, this is not a, that's not one of the big main four, M one of the four dirt bike companies, forget you KTM, and be like, that's not a real dirt bike. Well, I've dropped it, I've injured myself, I've broke stuff, I've gone up hills, I've gotten dirty. You know what? <laughs> Mom, I'm dirt bike riding. Now, after taking this off-road, it was a little bit of a learning curve to get used to the lack of power on this thing, but once I figured it out, it was a blast. It was a lot of fun. There's a few things that the Kickstarter, I think I should have tightened it up a little bit more. These pegs are actually rubber pegs. These are better. Oh, actually, here we go. Hold on. I just figured this out. I was, I was kind of complaining because I was slipping. My, my feet were slipping off this because these are rubber pegs, but you can actually pull this insert out somehow. And then you have just regular dirt bike pegs, which I wish I'd, I'd known that. So that, that kind of makes it better. So this thing did pretty decent off-road. And you notice that these are very aggressive tires, pretty much just as aggressive as the ones on my dirt bike. Let's see how this thing does on-road. All right, guys, before we do a test drive, let's do the words of wisdom, Job 1925. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and at last, he will take his stand on the earth. Amen. Let's take this thing for a spin. Now, it takes a little, you know, you put on choke for a little while, ride it around and then after that it actually idles pretty well it is kind of funny I don't recall this uh, noticing this before but the kickstand uh, the, the the kickstarter kind of hangs out in a goofy way maybe you just bend that back when I was dirt bike riding I was kept on snagging myself on it so let's see if this thing is a uh, would be a good commuter bike for someone could for 1400 bucks could you actually get reliable transportation now from what i'm hearing oh hey what's going on with that you broken that thing not working now 
Uh, maybe we broke the speedometer. I don't know. Maybe. Wait a second. Hold on. Maybe it got squished. Look at that. Maybe that cable got squished. So, I guess we can't do zero to 60. But, could this thing be reliable transportation for you? Now, from what we're seeing, um, with people actually commenting on us, saying that they have this bike, or, you know, it's, it's actually seems like it's kind of reliable, which kind of, kind of blows my mind away. Now, another thing that we heard from some people is that you can, you can modify them. And anything can be modified. But from stock, this is not producing the most amount of power. So a nice jet kit. A nice jet, you know, uh, get the carbs, re-jet it. Maybe a new, uh, new intake. Maybe a more obnoxious exhaust. You might be able to squeeze another four or five horsepower out of this bike. But you can see I'm having, not having any problem keeping up with, you know, town traffic. And if you were cruising with your buddies and all your buddies had something like this, man, you guys could have a lot of fun for very little money. You could honestly just tell your parent, you know, don't, don't give me Christmas and my birthday present for the next three years and just buy me one of these dirt bikes. <laughs> May, I don't know. You might regret that. I don't know. But just make sure you buy the warranty. But think about it. If you had a couple buddies and y'all had the egg, y'all bought different colors of the same bike, and when you're racing around, it's all the same, it's all the same thing, you know, and you're all neck and neck, and you're all, you're, you know, you find cool stuff like that, and you're like, hey, let's go ride our dirt bikes on some big uh, mound, and you can go from, and this opens up a lot of opportunities of things that you could do. You could, for, for not that much money, generally dual sports. Now, dirt bikes itself are not generally that expensive, but, uh, what makes it expect but well, when it's a dual sport when you add that dual sport the fact that you can legally ride the thing on the street then it does become kind of expensive but for 1400 that's crazy crazy how cheap this thing is but then you you know you and your buddies could could go from you know go on road trips you guys can go on off-road trips and see if i can get air on this little bridge no, not really, but got my front end off. Just a lot of cool opportunities. I mean, I got 26 miles on this thing, and I've had a blast. I've had 26 amazing miles, and 24 of those were all on dirt. No, I haven't ridden a, a normal dirt bike in a while. The transmission seems, you know, a little bit clunky. But nothing that, you know, you, you just get used to it. Unless you're, unless you're riding, unless you're going from this to riding like a, you know, a 2019 Honda, you know, dirt bike, back and forth, back and forth, that might be kind of annoying. But when you just, when this is what you drive, this is your bike, honestly, you just, you just get used to it. I'm a little bummed out, I broke that speedo. Now, could this thing keep up at highway speeds? I, I don't think so. Uh, maybe 55, you might be able to, I, so I guess you could at 55. I'm not sure with these tires, I'm gonna feel super comfortable doing highway speeds. These are very aggressive tires, great for off-road, pretty mediocre for on-road, and especially at those higher speeds. I'm not sure if the bike's gonna feel, com you know, super stable with the wheelbase it's at. But if you had to go from one exit to another exit, you know what I mean? You, you'll be fine. I hope. Now, we were actually contacted by a few people who, who've owned these bikes uh, for a couple of years, and we actually hear some pretty good things about them. We actually got contacted by a guy from Haiti that says these things are very common. They're about 1200 bucks in Haiti, and that these engines are pretty much bulletproof, and you'll actually see these bikes with like 12 people hanging off of them. Think about it this way. Let's say Hawk Technology is 30 years behind Honda. A 30-year-old Honda is still a pretty decent bike. Well, that wraps it up, guys. 
Subscribe. Remember, it's not what you're riding, but where are you going?